Greetings and thank you for spending a few minutes to join us this week to learn about all of the things that are happening at FHN and how we can better serve you. This week, it's my pleasure to introduce Sarah Graybill, who is our Director of Patient Access. And Sarah leads a great team that are working constantly to try and make it easy and convenient for you to be able to access the very important healthcare services that you need at FHN whether that is for your wellness care or whether it's for an acute need. So thanks for joining us, Sarah. Well, COVID-19 certainly has brought about a lot of opportunity for us to really change the way that we've delivered healthcare to our communities. Uh, we want to make sure that people know that they're safe, that it's safe to come to us. Um, it's important for you to stay on track with your wellness care. Um, so if you're having issues, uh, if you need to make an appointment, it's easy to do that. We want you to pick up the phone, call us, and we can schedule that appointment for you right away. It might be an in-person visit, but we also are offering telehealth visits for our patients who would feel more comfortable um, staying in the comforts of their home for that appointment. So there's a lot of opportunity for you. Uh, our waiting rooms are safe. It's safe for you to come and visit us, and it's easy for you to do that. It absolutely applies to all of our patients. We want the scheduling process to be as easy as possible for our patients. So when you hang up the phone, you're gonna know exactly when your appointment is. You're gonna know instructions about that appointment, what to bring with you, um, where to check in. Um, now that we've made some rearrangements to our waiting rooms, there might be instructions about waiting. Um, but you're gonna have that appointment before you hang up the phone and you're gonna know everything that you need before you come. Well, a lot of the times it depends upon what your need is. If you have an urgent issue that you need to be seen for right away, obviously we're going to accommodate your schedule and do what we can to meet those needs. But if you're just looking to establish with a provider for annual wellness and primary care visits, those will again accommodate your schedule and do the best we can to get an appointment for you in a time frame that works best for you. Well, there are several options for our patients. We have partnerships with Physicians Immediate Care. If you have a more urgent after hours need, they're available for you. Obviously, our FHN Emergency Department is also available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And then we also have really um, widened our scope of services that we can provide to our patients. Many of our providers offer a virtual visit, a telehealth visit, that you can connect with your provider via video and review some of those things that you have going on with them. So it's another great way for you to connect with your provider. If you're not comfortable with the video, you can also just uh, arrange a phone call with your provider as well. And then also just uh, messaging your provider through my FHN patient portal is another option if you just have a question that you need to be answered. The portal is another great way for you to be able to communicate with your provider. Well, any of the offices that you dial, you can dial directly to any of the provider offices and you're gonna get connected with a scheduler who can um, help you get those appointments scheduled um, anytime that you need them. We're available um, six days a week um, and we're really here when patients don't maybe think we're here. So starting at 7 a.m. in the morning, you know, you're dealing with a sick child, for instance, and you need to coordinate um, how your day is gonna go, but you really need to get, a, get that appointment scheduled. Uh, you can call first thing in the morning to any one of our provider offices and someone will be there to answer that phone call and help you get that appointment scheduled. Well, as I mentioned earlier, any of our provider offices, um, you dial that number, you'll get connected with a scheduler, but we also have a toll-free number that is available for our patients to call directly. That number is 1-877-600-0346, extension 965. If um, patients are on our web or on our app, there's also a click to call at the bottom of the app as well. So it's really super easy for patients to get a hold of us.
FHN continues to advance and to grow. Well, a couple of things that I'm really excited about is our increased accessibility. So we've been able to do more elective cases, more procedures, getting people into our doors a little bit quicker. We've done a lot of work on our processes to be able to make sure that we can do that in the safest way possible. And so those um, techniques, those processes, that cleaning, that sanitation, the spacing, the social distancing, I think we've got that working really well now. So good couple of weeks of practice with that. Um, also excited to share that it's been several days now since we've had a COVID-19 positive patient in-house. So currently as I'm speaking to you or this filming is we have no COVID-19 positive patients at FHM Memorial, which is um, the first time since the pandemic began. So I think that's a very good outcome and shows that uh, things are working. Um, we've also been able to host two community-wide testings partnering with the Stevenson County Health Department and combined we've been able to test 284 of our community members. So being able to provide that service for free has been something that I'm very proud of FHN being able to reach out to do. So lots of really good things happening throughout our organization. Some non-COVID-19 related updates is our mental health crisis stabilization unit. The construction is on schedule, well underway. And so I'm really glad that we have that process moving to help service a lot of our behavioral health patients and those with uh, mental health needs, especially at the time of being in crisis, to help alleviate them from being into our emergency room. So we're very glad to see that happening and stay on track and we continue to look at what is the future going to bring for our organization and really how do we come out of this and I'm very hopeful that we will continue to be able to manage anything that comes our way and grateful for the support of all of you in our community. As Illinois moves into phase four of the Restore Illinois plan, there's a lot of detail that we've had to become familiar with as far as knowing what is allowable, what's not allowable, what's happening throughout our communities with restaurants, with um, theaters, with a lot of other activities for group gatherings. One of the things that we're looking at, does this help us to expand our educational offerings? Does this help us in some way, shape, or form help put community members at ease as they come into our doors? I think as we move into phase four, there's a lot of things that don't change. And when I say that is because we are a healthcare institution, we do have a lot of higher standards that we have to meet and to continue to observe to make sure we are protecting our most vulnerable population. One of the things that we're looking at the early July is relaxing some of our visitor restrictions. So being able to open that up very gradually and as long as we can maintain the safety of our patients as well as our visitors, I think that'll be something that's a welcome change. As we move into phase four, it's also important that we continue to be cautiously optimistic, which means that adhering through some of the recommended guidelines and not really declaring victory over COVID-19 because it's still very much present and it's still very much a part of our day-to-day -day as healthcare providers. And so we wanna make sure we don't lose focus on that. And then as community members, you know, again, enjoy and just please act responsibly. Um, know when to maybe excuse yourself from a situation where you feel like it's going to be overcrowded or you're not going to be able to have all of the hygiene or sanitation needs that are available to keep you and your family safe. So phase four is an exciting time and if we do it well, we will continue to advance and combat COVID-19. It's really a, a difficult time in our nation's history. And I would share that the pressures that we've all experienced through the pandemic and then witnessing these type of unlawful activities is something that we, that I 
condemn. There's never a time where it's appropriate to abuse people and to hurt people with unnecessary use of force. Um, just as well as that it's very um, unjustified to respond with rioting, looting, and non-peaceful protests. Um, that also is an injustice and not the right way to respond. To make sure that we are openly talking about inequity, that we are addressing issues directly, is the best way to go. Peaceful protests, bringing things out to the forefront so that we're not able to ignore or to brush those things away, but to really come and have meaningful conversations about how are we going to become a stronger, better nation and how are we going to heal. With that said, I think it's also a great opportunity for us to really come together, to be thoughtful about what we do moving forward and also make sure that these situations don't persist and that they don't continue and they are not acceptable. FHN has a strong educational program for all of our staff and that educational program is not conducted just when you're hired but we have that training every single year. So anybody within our organization from myself throughout anyone else that's wearing that FHN name badge needs to complete that training. But more importantly, we need to role model that, which means that there's zero tolerance for discriminatory practices. We are given the opportunity to serve any and all people throughout our community, regardless of whether that be race, socioeconomic impact, their gender preferences, their religious preferences, None of that matters. They're all people that we are privileged to serve. At the same time, we have an incredible amount of diversity amongst our organization, which makes us a stronger organization. And we just really don't have time to have to deal with anybody who is being discriminatory. Within our mission statement in FHN, respect, dignity, and compassion are pillars of what we do and there is no place for discrimination as we look at those pillars. Our workforce standards incorporate those words, respect, dignity, and compassion for each other as employees and coworkers, and also for all of the families, which again, we're privileged to be able to serve. Personally, more so a what I'll share what I believe versus what I feel. And I believe that we are all descendants from Adam and Eve, and that we are one blood, we are one race. Regardless of the level of pigmentation in our skin, we are all human beings, and we need to embrace the fact that we are all equal and that we are the same. If we can make sure that we keep our minds open, and more importantly, our hearts open, there is so much more potential that we have to work together and to improve the well-being of all of our community, which is where my passion has been as a caregiver is to help any and anybody, all of my brothers and my sisters. So from a faith-based centering, that's my personal belief. For any community, and of course, I'm much more focused on our community, is to make sure that we don't shy away from having uncomfortable conversations. I think that's one of the things that we don't do well, is that it is uncomfortable, so people don't want to have those conversations. They don't want to have that free exchange of ideas, and we don't want to challenge our own biases that all of us have at some place and some point to some degree. And the more that we accept that there is bias and the more that we accept that it's a conversation that we need to have, the better off we're going to be as a community. And so I believe that as community members, we need to have those discussions and those discussions need to be open, they need to be genuine, sincere, and non-adversarial. And more importantly, we need to engage our youth in those conversations. 
we need to make sure that we are not only role modeling, but we're also being purposeful about talking about inequality and injustices, because that's the only way that we're going to be able to create change, lasting change. It's not going to be based on some regulation or based on some legislation. It really has to come from how we interact with each other as a society. I believe that it's critical as a healthcare organization that we are role modeling the way. As healthcare organizations, we are committed to compassion and helping people and trying to see all sides of the story, trying to make sure that we're caring for people in a non judgmental way. As healthcare providers, as we look at the Hippocratic Oath, as we look at what we are committed to do, what we've been trained to do, is to serve all people, is to look at the skills and to look at the talent that we have as an organization and be able to share that freely and openly and to be able to create that change, to be able to create that difference and more importantly to make sure that we all working as one family taking care of other families. So as a healthcare organization I think it's a very heavy responsibility of our organization to be above the norm, to be above um, what people may deem as acceptable. Any form of discrimination or bias is unacceptable. There is zero tolerance. There is not a place for it. It interferes with our mission. We're unable to do the things that we need to do for our community. If we don't prioritize addressing and serving with respect, dignity, and compassion leading the way. As we prepare for the 4th of July, I'd like to start by sharing a safety message. It's one of those times of years where we have um, great cause for celebration. And I think this year, even more importantly, with all of the turmoil that we are experiencing as a nation, it's important for us to be able to go and reflect back that we did have a pretty tumultuous start as a nation. And so as we think about the 4th of July and our Declaration of Independence, our nation has a strong history of battling injustice. That's how we were founded. With that said, we usually celebrate that in very hot weather environments, so it's staying hydrated. It's also making sure that um, people that are using fireworks are trained to utilize fireworks to avoid injuries. We do oftentimes see, um, unfortunately, avoidable admissions to our emergency room. It also tends to be a time of year where people get a little overzealous on their yard work and um, home projects, so making sure that you are exercising safety throughout that. But knowing that your FHN providers are here for you and that we're ready and able and willing to serve should you need an appointment. So as we look at the 4th of July holiday, I hope that you enjoy and you do so safely. I think this is a wonderful time of the year for Northwest Illinois. We have so much available for us to be able to enjoy. I know my family and I were personally looking at scheduling a number of bike rides. We have some camping trips in the local area. And of course, we're all looking forward to going and being able to dine in as well as dining out in a lot of our local area businesses. Our plan is to do that responsibly and to make sure that we're keeping each other safe. But we're not going to be hiding away um, worried about things that we have no control over versus embracing all of the opportunities that we're blessed to be able to enjoy during this time of the year. And I've encouraged a lot of other families to be able to do that. Um, when we have meaningful conversations during that time, these are great avenues, these are great opportunities that we don't want to let go to waste. Um, being healthy, so keeping up with healthy activities, it's a great time to get out there walking, hiking, um, enjoying your pets, and again, supporting any and all of our local businesses as we look to restore our own community throughout Stevenson County, throughout um, the counties that we serve in Northwest Illinois.